I'm so worried that like my son, if I have a son, will have a fat ass. Okay. Is that a ass. Yeah. I feel like it's kind of weird, like, which it shouldn't be, but like, I just remember this kid from like elementary school, and he had a fat, Jesus. fat donk. That's not gonna be on the record, right? <laughs> Is this off the record that you're saying this? Well, this is. Are we starting? We started already, oh, okay. but thanks for the oh, good shit. start. <laughs> the nice, hard, genetically okay. altered start, you know. <laughs> that is kind of true. I mean, between you and um and Rob too, it's kind of genetically predisposed. The, the kid will inherit something, right? Uh, maybe from my end. I don't know about Rob, but I mean, it ain't bad. Ah, fuck it! I'm the novice here. Yeah. I'm the one amongst the talent here. Of course, we got um. Newcomer, yourself, Tony, right? Yes, to the me. program. Thank you for that. Uh, I can, you can't hear it now, but I'm pressing the applaud button, so. Oh, we'll hear oh, oh you got on. that shit? Yeah. Damn. Well, right. it won't for now. I had to switch out the sound card, so, you <laughs> nice. know. Nice. Working on the budget. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'd be mad if I listened back to this, like a slide whistle and fucking boing. <laughs> <laughs> We're working what we got here. <laughs> and of course, no strangers to the show, we got Mikey, of course. Dr. Mikey, excuse me. Always got to dress him properly. <laughs> Dr. Mikey. Dr. Mikey, and of course, been a while and overdue as well, too, on your end. We got Melly Murphy, of course. Applause, applause. And that's did Murphy with two eyes. Yes, I did. Nice. Oh, I missed the button for Mikey, though. So, yeah, because <laughs> he's a doctor and because he's Mikey. <laughs> Double time for him. But, yeah, thank you guys for joining me here. It's going to be brief. It's going to be quick, considering, you know, people on a schedule with talent, too. I'm the one here. I'm the schmuck, you know, trying to gather, you know, the real talent. The, the genius is here, too. But I figured I have to have, you know, I have to take the opportunity to have Melly, Mikey, and now new to the show, Tony. Thank you guys again for coming on, doing to do this. Melly just got done doing her thing at the Peace and Bonfire Festival here in Queens. Yeah. You guys tagged along to help her. And from what I understand, you guys been a part of the formula of helping her perfect the craft, find her tune. How does it feel to even, like, be in the presence of somebody like her? What the fuck? I mean, she's got the flower when the hair it works. come on. In the press. <laughs> it, should, it should be like the opposite. Yeah, like, what the fuck? Humble. I'm in the presence extremely of them. Yeah, you, know, you, think you're, uh, you know, you think you're at a certain level and then you're... You, know, <laughs> then you become a Murphy <laughs> and then, you know, <laughs> you know shit pops off. <laughs> then you make it one day working with Melly. That's one. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, yeah, no, honestly, like, like all jokes aside, like, I'm the one that's blessed to have these two in my life and as a, as a part of the unofficial Murphys, right? Everyone smile when I say that. <laughs> so when's it officially going to become Melly and the Murphys? Probably never. Point? No. Okay. She, can get no. A solid, uh, she can get a solid lineup of Murphys. It's been a slightly different <laughs> for show. Also, that sounds mad fucking corny. Yeah, like no, Melly and the a, Murphys. Murphy is, this is like weird. a transient state of being. <laughs> I just, sometimes yeah. you're a Murphy and sometimes you're not. <laughs> sometimes you're not. <laughs> not so Murphy today. <laughs> and just because you're not a Murphy doesn't mean that you're not a part of the Murphys. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So is your fan base called the Murphys? They're called the Murfettes. What? what fa no, <laughs> like my, the female my fan base is called my family and friends. <laughs> <laughs> Mama. Yeah, my family is Ma, called Ma, cute, gracias. <laughs> Well, that's for now, of course. You know, you're working your way up. My greatest pain in life is I will never be able to see me perform. Yeah, I mean, I, like, for me, like, it's just kind of like, I just want, I'm just thankful to have a chance to perform. Hmm. And just get comfortable on stage, you know, and the fact that, like, I have people in my life that are willing to play with me and are free. Hmm. So. Your first show? The first time we played. The first time we played Bonfire was my first show, yeah, like my first real show with like a band. And that was like always a dream of mine. You know this, and I'm like, yo, I always wanted to like be like in the front of a band and like the singer. And so like kind of was that. I mean, it was. So that's your first official like kind of big thing? Yeah, the first time we did it, like I think in August or some shit? It was in August. So um, yeah, I mean, there's there's pros and cons to um, to where you are in a lineup at a show, especially in kind of a, you know, a local festival or anything like that where, you know, you haven't really cultivated a huge fan base. Obviously playing later will give you like a prime mm. slot in terms of the crowd. Uh, the sound guys, the venues usually are warmed up by then. So the sound usually kind of gradually gets better. 
the only thing is I think like on a on a on a selfish impractical level it's kind of like every time I play a show and I've had to headline or co-headline or play a later slot it's always like Jesus I want to just get on stage already so it's like it's hard to really have fun at a show until you've already performed been off the stage and kind of done your duties yeah that's true because of the jitters and all that yeah so considering you guys barely maybe have what two or three shows that you can keep track of till now third show show. do you guys feel you're getting the formula down pat right now it's still something to work on work in progress at least for me i feel way better but then like every show depends like because if we change we're changing the song Right, like today, like we we added a new song that we did play already, the last show, but the last show was with different people, <laughs> like yeah, and different instruments. There's only about one or two moving pieces every show, or it'd be like one, you know, a couple like uh, a couple guitarists we swap, swap between, or um, just uh, whether it's an acoustic show or a full band performance. You know, there's just been like yeah, like how did you? We didn't even practice, Mike. Like we practice for the cajon but for today we didn't practice with you on the drums like did you feel like nervous or was it like fuck it like i got it i mean i played the first bonfire the only difference was uh the change of songs yeah oh yeah that and the song we did today yeah losing me losing me me. so i had to like (laughs) figure out a way to translate that from cajon to a full set and figure out how to like (laughs) <laughs> that would help. Figure, figure out how to. Uh, Martinez unplugged. So you know the uh, the cowbells. Like when I wrote the drum parts for the song, it like it became like a signature thing for the song. Mm, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So you know, if you wanted to play it for the set, and I'm like, oh, like I have to like figure out how to incorporate the cowbells onto like physically a attach drum the set. cowbells yeah. onto the drum set, and like figure that out. Um, but yeah, I was able to do it. I think we made it work. Yeah. <laughs> Sounded great. I mean, I got no complaints at all, too, either. But um, I know you. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to yeah. be on here to tell it's you. Yeah, guys, you fucking suck. But I feel like we killed it. <laughs> yeah. No, but um, I know you know Mikey for the longest time, at least. if Correct me if I'm wrong. I think from college, around the time you met Eddie and uh, and Frankie, right? No. No. Mikey I was met, afterwards? Yeah, I met Mike, like, which I'm assuming is who you're referring to as Mikey. Yeah. Oh, okay. I probably got the people. Just, myself. No, dude. I'm, no, no. <laughs> I just don't call him. I just don't call him Mikey. That's why I was just trying to be funny. Oh, okay. What do you yeah, call him? Then? Mike. Just Mike. Oh. <laughs> Fucking Mike. Or Michael when I'm when I gotta be stern. <laughs> I don't know if that's happened yet. Um. No, I met him after. I think like I met him through. Technically, I met you through Rob. Even though you met Rob through Eddie and Frank, I met you through Rob. Yeah. So it was like later on, but like it's been a minute. We've known each other for quite a while now. Because we're old as fuck. I would say like four. I don't know about four. I'm guesstimating, but I don't know. Not because I graduated like almost two years ago. So it can't be four because I met. What about three? I met Bob after. Okay. So we're going to stick to three? Two and a half. Wow, okay. <laughs> you know what? Time doesn't matter. That's, that's fam right there. So it is what it is. So in this case, how does Tony come into the mix as far as um, getting with Murphy and like uh, making Once this Once again, happen? through Rob. <laughs> All through Rob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, um, uh, me and uh, Rob and I play heavy metal together. I was um, funny enough. Not entirely through Frankie and Eddie, but um, I just knew Rob because we did something kind of similar in the in the in the heavy metal world. And he started when he started a project with Eddie and Frank. Um, I was like super super set on saying, "Hey, I want to record you. I want to produce you. I think that mm. I could do you know what you want." And, and um, halfway through recording, is finally he gave in. I recorded his EP, and halfway through recording. <laughs> Uh, so they had three guitarists. Finally he gave in. I know, no, they had three guitarists. <laughs> Yo, I remember band. that shit too. And nobody wanted to play bass for some reason. They thought three guitarists and no bass was like a logical thing to do. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, cool. Uh, yeah, sure. So um, uh, halfway through recording, I was like, here, I'll just write the bass parts. And um, then that turned into, hey, oh, yeah, I'll play bass for you guys, you know? So I became the bassist of their other band, which is called Galor. And um, mm. 
So I joined Rob's band, and then uh, that's a how we years met. Ago, yeah, and then a couple years ago, Rob joined my main band, and um, yeah, we became kind of a musical duo. We became kind of a production team, and well, that's where it came in because Rob produces, Rob writes and produces all of the Medi, all the Melly Murphy songs, pretty much. Yeah, it's kind of. I kind of give the final touches in terms. Even the little sprinkle. Production. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like I sometimes get overcredited for her production. But nah, I don't think so. It's really just, uh, yeah. I kind of come in at the end and um, finalize it, but it's it's really, you know, there are a couple. <laughs> there are a couple. That's it. Yeah, it sounded like you were gonna say something. There are a couple. Uh, no, there are a couple. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I guess you guys yeah. An item. We're a duo. I would say we're a duo. An item. Even though, you know, we're married. Illegally. We're talking about musically now. Yeah. Yeah. Without without Robert Wesley, there would be no Melly Murphy. And that's probably going to be true till the end. Because he told me, he's like, if you make it, you f- you got to fucking take me with you. And I'm like, of course. He's like, don't sign no shit where I can't be a part of Melly Murphy. And I'm like, I got you. Well, at this point, you can't sign off anything on your own anymore, right? You got to have Rob, whether you like it or not. Or if you guys got into a bad I fight, I find someone else if I wanted to, but I don't want to. I want him. <laughs> when you're posted on the ambulance, and you find out that T-Pain streamed, liked, and tweeted your song. I like this a lot. He's like, I did these backgrounds. I'm going to be in the fucking video. <laughs> uh, no, nah, I like that shit a lot, actually. I did like that a whole bunch, like a whole bunch. Um, So I did like it a lot. I can't wait to see the glow up because there's a lot of things that can be fixed. Um, I like it a lot. I can't wait to see the glow up. I liked it a lot. I can see what's, uh, you know, what's going to come of it. Ellie Murphy? Yep. So yours has been tweeted. I like that. Um, Ooh, you got a tweet. Well, actually, we got to sing your praises. Literally, I can't sing. I shouldn't sing. But by the way, Wait, you can hear we me hear sound, you I can, sing real quick? I, I just want to. Can get you sing like a you. little, like one line of your favorite Melly Murphy song? <laughs> I just want to get with you. Hey, baby, gonna get with you. Yeah. And then however else it goes, because I don't want to butcher it. Is all. Not in front of these guys. That actually, have the vocals and talents. <laughs> but, Yo. Uh, <laughs> well, no, I mean so Mikey. Good, though. No, Mikey, I know he's like, he plays himself down a lot. He discredits himself a lot besides being a doctor. <laughs> and he can handle the That's mic. a compliment. <laughs> and Tony, too, from what I heard, I mean, the last time, too, with the Ridgewood sh- uh, show, yeah. right now, too, you know, uh, kudos yep. to you, too. Sound awesome. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. But we do have to sing your praises because of all things randomly with Inhale, I believe. That's the one that got retweeted and plugged by yeah, of all dude, people T-Pain, crazy. so... I actually forgot to bring that up during the set. Like I was practicing at home, like today, like earlier, and I was like, oh yeah, so this, so we're gonna start it off. You know, T-Pain fucks with this song, so if you guys, I hope you guys fuck with it too, or some shit like that. And, and when I got on stage, I was like, ah, this is like Inhale. Song, <laughs> T-Pain likes this song, and he can't be wrong. Anyway, this is called Inhale. I was gonna ask you that, actually, that I would've thought maybe you would bring that up, because it would make sense, it was I fairly thought, new. I like earlier today when I was yeah. practicing. So I don't really have to practice the songs. I mean, I, I should, or actually I don't like to practice them too much before the show, but like, I like to practice the banter in between cause I'm not good at that right now. Like, I feel like I'm like, I could be way better. Um, so I was practicing that. I was like, yo, what's up? I'm Ellie Murphy. Thanks for coming out. Bonfire, yeah. So T-Pain fucks with this song. I hope you guys fuck with it too. It's called Inhale, and then boom. And I just forgot it. Like, when I got on stage, I just didn't say that. But yeah, that was very cool. It was random as fuck, and if anything, it was just kind of like a validation of like, yo, we're doing something right. Because it's not just me. It's not like, oh my God, I made it. Or like, no, like the team, like everyone that was involved with it, like the way that it sounds, the fact that it's produced so well and like, like recorded so well like he fucked with it he was like yo this is legit like i can see the glow up 
And he did say I like it like at least seven times, which is fucking crazy. I just wanted to uh, shout out my shout out my buddy Jess. She's the one who uh, submitted the song. He, Yo, word. She, oh, nice. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Jess. That was that was awesome. She, that was really fucking, cool. Yeah, no, she put. Can I curse on the show? Yeah, of course. Yeah, cool. Anyway, she fucking put. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she put the song in. She submitted it to T Pain and like sat through like a hundred different entries of him listening to people's music and then she hit me up like hey i think uh i think i think uh melly is coming up so crazy I tuned into twitch at the right so time so crazy like, okay cool yeah yo for real and then thank Mel you so much just some interesting news yeah yeah that was i was actually falling asleep and you were like yo mel i was like hey mel <laughs> check that. this out and i was like why the fuck is he texting me at like two three in the morning it was like late as fuck it was very late yeah and i was like, the fuck and for some reason i just clicked it and i was like Oh, like he did an edit because it was the tweet, uh, the tweet pain, the T pain tweet, and I was like, "Oh, what the fuck? Is that funny?" And then, like, I clicked on it. And I was like, "Yeah, no, he played it. He liked it." I'm like, "Wait, what? Cool. All right. Jeez. Fuck it." I don't know what. Yeah, a pleasant surprise, I'm sure. When you got that news, I mean. Yeah, it was it was inspiring. I'm not like a huge T pain fan. Like, I'm not like, "Oh my God, T pain! What do you come out with?" Or like. But you know, I'm gonna buy you a grill, ooh wee. But, and then I also watched him on The Masked Singer. Did you guys ever watch that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very <laughs> interesting show. <laughs> he was like one of the singers, and he, I think he won. And Sarah I was like, Taylor T Pain? Was on that show. What? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was random as fuck, but, but he's still respectable. Like, he's an artist, you know what I mean? Like, he knows what he's talking about. So for him to be like, I fuck with this was a big deal. That's Did he have the auto tune though, or no? Huh? T-Pain can sing really very He very can well. sing so good without he the auto-tune. Yeah. He really, yeah. Like he really uh, took, he took a lot of newer listeners like by surprise because he did, a, I think, an NPR Tiny Desk. Mm -hmm. It's like kind of a you know, so stripped good. down like uh, acoustic performance. And it's really funny. It's it's like very ironic because auto-tune is kind of like, auto-tune got this flack for being like the crutch for people. You who can't don't know sing. How to sing. Yeah, like, yeah. That was always, oh, it's auto-tune. You know, it was like this like. That's uh, what I thought. It, it yeah, and I mean, yeah. I get it. Like that was in in culture and media. Like it had this stigma, for, like this this uh, stigma of being like, well, you know, rest in peace, true artistry, because a bunch of like producers are just putting their ones and zeros, and now anyone can be a star. Hmm. And like that was definitely a huge narrative, especially like in the early mid two thousands. Like, um, yeah, if you but, have like, auto tune, you can't sing. Yeah. The, ir yeah. the irony is that T Pain's a fantastic singer, and he does not need it. It's truly just an artistic choice. That's why he did the mass singer. For the to yep. be like, yo, I can actually sing. Yeah, I mean, the NPR really showed it. The yeah, Tiny Desk. Think... That, that as well. I think the mass Singer <laughs> was just for fun. <laughs> all right, listen, don't fucking come for me for being a mass Singer fan, all right? Well, who created that show? Was it Nick Cannon? Like, one of the many things he has his hands in? So. One of I don't his many know. offspring. Yeah, one of his many. Besides him having literal too, much, too many offspring accounts. Oh, shit. <laughs> well, he does, I mean... You know how much I sacrificed! And obviously an established artist, so it's like, yo, this is fucking dope. Like, cause he listened, didn't he listen to like mad songs too? Yeah, yeah, he listened to like And he was like, eh. He like too. And it, or like, I don't know if he said it was bad. I watched it for a little bit. He was like, yeah, whatever. And yeah, then he really literally like people. watched it and was like, yo, I fuck with this. Like, I'm gonna retweet it. Like, what? Okay, cool. Like, let's keep doing whatever the fuck we're doing. Cause it's working. And I mean, we're nobodies right now. Like, Melly Murphy as a brand is nothing. On the come. Yeah, like. You built it. Like, Melly Murphy right now has, what, oh, yeah. five people showing up to a show, which I'm super grateful for. But, like, you know what I mean? Like, that's it. So, then now, what's the next step now that you got that? I mean, that's a nice little boost to have, a little pat on the back, but. I just want to keep doing shows and getting comfortable performing live. Um, obviously, like, my songs, when they're recorded and released, like, they sound great. I'm not worried about that. Um, for me, it's just getting comfortable performing because I haven't been able to do that for two years because of COVID and all this shit. Hmm. Um, so I just want to get out there and just, yeah, just you play. About, yeah, you had about two years to kind of cultivate your voice in the studio as a Right, artist. right. But I think that this is kind of the move to cultivate some sort of live following yeah. from playing yeah. similar places. And that's how you get most, like, random fans or, like, followers or whatever the fuck we're calling them, like, people that fuck with you. Yeah. If you get two people, at, even you get one person at every show that likes, one new person that likes it, like, like yo, I like that shit, yeah. Show. Yeah, yeah. Well, I would like to commend you now, at least on your stage presence, what, three-something shows in so far, because if anyone caught it besides me, 
She snatched up a green handkerchief that fell onto the thing, like mid-song without missing the beat, too. So that was I the... just want to get my shoes <laughs> and I pick them right back up. That was the set list that I had for myself because ah. I get very nervous on stage. Because I, I thought you were going to let it go when it was like... I saw it. I was yeah. looking at it, but it started to fly away, and I was like, fuck this shit. Boom. And then I was holding it, and then when I was holding it, and the next song was going to come on, I was like, oh, I know it's I Will Survive. Like, why am I like... It was it was kind of funny because yeah, I was like, funny. I already know what it is. I don't have to open this and be like, yeah, like a safety net. Yeah, I safety forgot that get with the <laughs> I forgot that uh, Just Vibe was the second song. I forgot about that. So I was the only one who didn't. I mean, I wasn't looking at I mean, a set list. But Frankie, I gave Frankie you one. The song, so at least we had that. Also. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, can't forget the cheat code, Frankie Payne. He's the one that kind of that's true. pulls the strings as a puppet master. I just, for me, I have it, like, because I'm like, all right, so this next song is this, or, like, blah, 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 blah. But, yeah, Frankie would just always hold it down if he had to. Shout out to the pain, no doubt. The new daddy pain, I guess, too. What, what's the kid's pain. name again? Uh, Levy, right, I think? Uh, Levy. Levy. You got to say it with the accent. Levy. 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 Not Levy like New Orleans, right? No, no Levy. Levy, Levy. Okay, Levy. Got Levy. Levy. Oh, like Murphy Levy? Exactly hey, I like guess that. so. <laughs> Can we get two eyes on that bad boy? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, again, I don't want to take up too much of you guys' time considering, you know, Mikey and Tony and such. You got stuff to do. It's a Saturday. You know, go out and enjoy yourselves. It's still warm enough, I guess, too. As you can tell in the background, everybody's here, too. They stole my fucking spot where I had ideally first, but <laughs> whatever. I tried you guys down Peace here. Peace and bonfire, bro. Peace and bonfire. <laughs> Peace and bonfire. <laughs> we walked into, the, like, literally the smoke of fire and smoke, whatever. <laughs> we made our way down here, but we escaped that narrowly. Thank you guys again. I appreciate it. Melly, Thank Tony, you. Mikey, Dr. Mikey, no stranger to the program, of course. Yo, it's over. All right? It's over. It's over. Move the mic. Move the mic. Thank you. All right.